Hello and welcome to the Mutual Fund Show. I'm Neeraj Shah. Over the next 20 minutes, we'll talk about two or three key aspects of uh, the MF space and looking at what the equity markets have done in the last uh, few days or weeks. Uh, are small caps a good space to invest in? Are small caps funds a good pocket to invest in? Is obviously critical uh, to talk about. So we'll do that. We'll also talk about whether uh, the, R- the, the RBI, the SEBI, or the combined decision on not allowing funds to invest in international products or international stocks could that see a reversal soon? Is it possible to even predict that? And should we prepare for that or take it as it comes? But more importantly, and most importantly, if you will, uh, we'll talk about uh, the recent spate of news around Axis Mutual Fund, which have caught the imagination of a lot of people. And a lot of people have been thinking whether the funds are safe, not safe, whether it's good to invest in that fund schemes versus some of the other fund houses, uh, uh, you know, without... I mean, irrespective of what their performance is. And is that the right approach really in the first place? So to talk about that, uh, all the way from the US is Mrin Agarwal, uh, founder of FinSafe India. And uh, from Delhi or rather today from Pune, uh, Shitiz Mahajan of Complete Circle. They both need no introduction. Thank you so much, both of you for joining in. And um, Shitiz, uh, to you, uh, all the best. Uh, I learned that you guys have started off your portfolio management services as well as a product. So all the best to both you and Gurmeet and the Complete Circle team for that. Thank you, Neeraj. We need your uh, wishes. And thank you very much for your wishes. No, no not at all. Uh, so, Shidis, can I start off with you since we're talking about that? Uh, I'm, make, I'm making a change. Usually, I go to the ladies first. But uh, let, let's not bring uh, the gender into the equation here, Shidis. Um, let me start with you on, on the Access MF developments. Now, um, a lot of people on social media are saying that, hey, should we keep our investments there? Should we take them out? Should we think about making newer SIPs or newer investments in other mutual funds, irrespective of our access funds may be doing? Because there is this event or episode that has allegedly happened. Can you talk a bit about that? What is your view? So, uh, Neeraj, for the understanding of everyone, how mutual fund fund management work is very important here. Uh, there is a fund manager assigned to a particular specific fund. There's a co-fund. There can be a co-fund manager. There's a dealer assigned. And there are common research analysts which provide research to various uh, co-fund managers. Fund manager, he normally trades through the dealer assigned dealer. And that's how the trade, like because you buy underlying stocks in a, in a fund or an ETF, that's how it's been placed. Now, in this scenario, uh, you know, still they have not reached any conclusion. Seven funds, which which have been talked about, there, there, there might be a chance because the conclusion is not reached. We are no one to reach the conclusion of uh, front running. Out of which five are ETF, one is a value fund, and seventh one is a quant fund. There are seven funds, and and front running doesn't affect the fund per se because yeah, uh, uh, it affects somebody who is doing, uh, and uh, it it might affect the fund if the if the underlying holdings are not the right holdings. But having said that, these are ETFs which were there. And a couple of other funds are value and bond funds. My submission here is uh, uh, we have got statements from Access Bank yesterday, uh, three days back from Generation Nigam, MDNC of Access Mutual Fund. Uh, the, the charge of 7,700 crore funds have been given. But there is not any major movement of NAV, which is which is movement of NAV is because of market fall only. I have not seen anything which is which is moved because of this news. My sense is uh, that, that that's Let's give some time before things uh, unfold. But with other funds, I don't see these funds should be taken on a different note. With, with other funds, there is no need to be even worried about. It's a it's a it's a good fund house, and then there are these type of things which uh, which should be avoided and not happen. But if it has happened, they are doing the investigation at their end since February onwards. It's a internal investigator of access only, which is doing investigation, and uh, that in itself gives. Little comfort that yes, uh, they 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 will reach a conclusion and they will realign funds as per the need of as per the objective of fund. So I don't I don't see a reason that one should look at redeeming or uh, uh, stopping set right now because uh, there is no as such movement. Markets are falling. Otherwise, maybe the fund naps have fallen, but there is no as such movement. And a shorty has been given. It's 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 been they managing more than two point seven lakh crore of assets. And they, are the, they have the largest equity assets with them as the AMC. So uh, uh, that's my conclusion, or let's say that's my belief that one should stick around unless and until there's an objective of the scheme which they are planning to change. Hmm. Brin, um, you would have observed, I'm not saying such an instance would have happened, but 
instances of this nature in other, not necessarily in AMC, but otherwise in, in markets per se, have happened. Is that, is this uh, a good enough reason for people to feel worried about their investments? Or is it a reason which shouldn't make people too worried? What is your view? Well, certainly, I think uh, people should be watching out. Uh, I, I think it is a bit of a cause of a worry, but not a cause of worry enough to have a knee-jerk reaction to exit from the fund at this point in time. Um, again, if you look at uh, in this specific case, it's a good fund house. It's got a good performance. Liquidity in these schemes is not an issue. Most of them are ETFs with large cap holdings again. Um, I think, uh, you know, what we've seen from the past instances is that the regulator has always come out with a new set of regulations, tightened regulations and tried to make the system more foolproof. And I think, you know, I, I really don't know how they would do it in these cases because there are already a huge set of regulations and huge set of um, uh, restrictions in place in terms of access and stuff like that. But uh, I think, you know, what an investor is probably looking at now is that what can be done to protect me from such instances in the future, right? And I think that's what we are looking at to see. But really, I, I, it is a cause of concern. I think you need to wait and watch. Do not have a knee-jerk reaction and exit. Um, again, if you're not comfortable, there's a lot of liquidity. You can certainly exit. But remember, you're exiting when markets are down, there could be exit load, there could be a tax impact. No, but, but, but Mint, Mint, sorry, uh, I'm coming in here. Forget, forget the timing. Let's assume the markets were higher. Would you believe or would you, if you had the money, would you exit uh, from these schemes and look at other AMCs? Or is this not a cause enough for you to exit the AMC altogether? It's not a cause enough at this point, uh, given the amount of information that's there. But I'm saying that if an investor is uncomfortable and you know they, they're not feeling happy about all of this, then sure, look at exiting. And in any case, a lot of the funds are sector funds, which I don't recommend. So um, I'm just saying that, yeah, if you're not comfortable, you might as well exit. Okay. Um, Shitiz, uh, to your mind, and you know, one can go on and on about this, but I'm still trying to understand. Would you believe that in any of the, I mean, whatever has come out thus far, do any of those um, alleged or likely events that would have happened all this while, presumably, do they impact the, the returns for somebody who is invested in the fund? Could that be uh, a case or not really? So Neeraj, it can impact, if you ask me, it can impact the return part. Uh, uh, because had it been uh, uh, somebody is, is, is front running any script in the portfolio. So, you know, the certain jump, uh, which, is, which, which is not an everlasting jump, can impact, uh, spike the return of the portfolio. And normally, that should not be the criteria, but most of the people, they look at the past performance and that's how they come. Of course. But one comfort which I get from their MBN CEO, the statement says that all the funds are open for redemption. So anybody can uh, uh, can redeem whenever they want to redeem. Second important point is that there is enough liquidity in the funds if you actually go through the underlying security. Third, the most important point here is that uh, as most of the client, if they are still uncomfortable, so it it. Obviously, people have lost their money in fixed income uh, deposits like ILFS and DHFL. So there, there is a cause of worry when this news has floated. And a couple of days were really, very really bad initial couple of days when that clarification started coming. One is equity markets falling. Second, uh, these type of news actually led to that whether your money will come back or not. But I think, I think very maturely handled by Access Mutual Fund and Access Bank. Having said that, if you have any client who's watching this has a little bit of uncomfort or discomfort at this level also, uh, then you should move up. Otherwise, you ask me, I have investment. If I have investment there, I don't even remember whether I have investment in access or not because I don't look at my portfolio. That's what we tell clients, don't look at your portfolio. Uh, I would have not redeemed because I feel it's a it's a fairly mature and good fund house. Okay. Yeah, that's the, so, you know, guys, that was the answer that I was looking for per se because I, I understand if an investor is uncomfortable, she or he can move out. But the idea yeah, was yeah. whether the person needs to do that or no, that is the answer that I think I was looking for. So, Shitiz and Mrin, thank you for giving me that answer. If you right. guys had it, uh, presumably, 
you guys you wouldn't uh, get out of it that's what shitish said mean i presume that's your answer is yes. well, if you had yes. it, you would not have moved out because of this yes okay I would but because there's uh, because of this I, but I because there's out, rather I, I do have some investments in some access funds and i haven't moved out okay great okay so viewers well these are two people who eat sleep breathe mutual funds amongst other things that they do and they are happy uh, staying with their investments whatever little they might have or do have into the access amc schemes this episode has not impacted their view out there if that gives you comfort keep in mind viewers um, there is no saying that the advisors who come on the show or any show are necessarily always right i am not saying that one bit but um, their reputation precedes them so you can take heart from what they have said and if you believe uh, in their advice per se then at least that should be a cause of comfort for you if you are an if you are a current or a potential investor into any of the access schemes so thank you so much both of you for that clarity uh now brin uh, point 2 uh, is is around small caps because that's the other thing right here there is no single fund house but a bunch of funds which have come off really really rapidly in the last few days and a lot of people like every time say that this time could really be different because uh, of liquidity crunch and inflation etc so my question to you is if somebody has investments in small caps or is thinking of putting some money into equity funds are small caps a good option to start an sip or a lump sum as the case may be or would you wait and watch or would you avoid them all together and you would stick to large caps or large and mid caps or as the case may be well in fact i always recommend some bit of uh, small caps in the portfolio because if you look at uh, small caps on a long term basis which is of course 10 years plus you would always find that there is a good amount of alpha that you can generate there and it does provide a good quicker to the portfolio as well when you also look at um, long term rolling returns you do find that small cap funds have done very well in the past as compared to mid cap or as compared to large cap so certainly i would say have a 15% maybe you know 10 to 15 or 20% allocation to small caps but i think the key is your behavior when you have invested in that small cap so it's it's easy to find a fund to invest into but i think it's that much more difficult to remain invested and this is what is going to be more challenging in a small cap because you're going to see volatility you're going to see um, um uh, you know the, the huge amount of stock return variance within small caps as well and how you are going to handle that and i mean rather are you going to do something about it or not so essentially small cap if you want to invest you need to have a 10 year time frame and you just need to remain invested of course you need to choose the fund right as well but i think the main thing is really about remaining invested for the long term certainly it's very difficult to say what's a good time to invest but you know from a larger allocation perspective i would certainly recommend some amount into small caps so start start an sip at the current juncture as well when is what you're saying if you're in it for the long term why not of course okay perfect shit is what's what's your sense considering all that's happening around us and the kind of um, if not a carnage then the deep gashes that we've seen at that end of the spectrum should people initiate sips or lump sums or continue with their sips in the small cap funds so neeraj uh, there is a set of client or risk profile uh, for which small cap fund is right as in your multi cap funds or in many large cap or larger mid cap funds also sometimes you see small cap allocation which normally they take but yes uh, uh, young people uh, you know which is up to 35 years of age they should have a clean uh, or maybe 40 years of age they should have a clean allocation towards small cap if their risk appetite is little high is a this uh, risk profile is little high is a this other clients having said that at this juncture if you ask me uh, sip any time you can start in small cap for this type of uh, investor 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 profile and there can't be any issue with regard to good fund man, manager and fund uh, fund houses so there are there are three to four funds uh, where i see that there is lot of value what which is building up and uh, i i synchronize with what mineral has said that small cap allocation can be for 5 6 years it has to be for 7 to 10 years there can be a uh, there can be a phase of 3 to 4 years that is room performance and there can be a year where there is a jump or bump of 120 130% 130%. so that that happened with most of the multi cap funds also but here in uh, i very i very seriously feel that uh, forget about small cap or large cap or any other category this is the time one should actually go slow on stp also 
uh, because we might see consolidation happening uh, across markets and you don't know which way this war will go. So my sense here is that STP should also be a little long for four to five months across portfolios and set can be started uh, in small cap up to 10% of allocation. So, and once you look at those funds with low volatility, uh, with good rolling returns, uh, and third, with consistency of fund manager with the fund, because in small cap, you have little more stocks in the portfolio vis-a-vis -vis other portfolios, because you can't take 5% allocation uh, uh, in single stock in small cap. At, at the same level, if the consistency of fund manager is there with the fund, then you can see uh, a better hand holding rather than when, when faces are moving and there are new fund managers coming to the picture. So mm -hmm. uh, I would like to go with those funds where you have the consistency or longevity of the fund manager with the fund. Got it. Okay. So are there any examples, Shitis? I mean, are there are there houses, are there schemes that you think um, are well placed and people can, of course, will do their due diligence, but what is your thought? So a couple of them, in fact, neither surprisingly, uh, SBI small cap and DSP small cap. And these are these are just examples. There's no recommendation. Uh, they, these both funds have been managed by their CIOs. SBI is managed by Srinivasan, uh, DSP is managed by Vinay Sambre. So, you know, when, uh, you know, when the most senior post person in the team is managing small cap, you know, it gives you a little more comfort. And they've been managing this fund since last seven, since the, since the time of inception, it's last seven, eight years. These are the two funds which are clear cut example of that they denied taking allocation in the portfolio when they were, uh, uh, when they, when as a house, they feel they, they felt that this is not the right time to take allocation in small cap. They closed the funds and they opened up as in when there is an opportunity which was there, they have taken. Uh, another example is of Kotak and Nippon small cap. Again, longevity of fund manager is there with the fund house. So all of these three to four fund funds have done pretty uh, fairly well over a period of time. Uh, DSP has been lagging over the last five years returns around 13, 14 percent of bonding. But I'm saying uh, that should not be the cause of worry because the fund otherwise has done overall very well. But uh, idea is that if the longevity is there uh, of the fund manager and uh, uh, if a fund house is playing out right by not taking uh, uh, money when they thought that the size is big and they can't take more money, I think you should uh, look at these type of funds. Got it. Brin, um, uh, what, are, what are the funds that you believe people can choose in the small cap category? Well, I concur with Shitaj. Uh, my recommendation is also DSP and SBI for the reasons that he outlined. One is the consistency of performance and, of course, consistency of fund manager. Because when you're investing in a small cap fund, you're looking at a fund house that has a good um, ability to do good research and execution at the same time, right? And I think, you know, having a fund manager managing it right from inception onwards, and we've seen good performance, we've seen them looking at buying good businesses, right, which have healthy competitive advantage. So I would still go with um, SBI and DSP as my bets. Okay, well, we are so a few options, but SBI small cap and DSP small cap do stand out as funds. But if you're investing in small caps, Yes, it's a good time to invest, but both our experts say that invest into them with a perspective of the next uh, more than more than seven years, like seven to ten years, that kind of a fee, uh, time frame. Don't invest into them from a three-year perspective. Yes, they may do well even over three years, but don't invest with that perspective because they may not necessarily give you the returns in the next one, two, three years as well. It may happen. So I think that's the point. Okay, uh, the final question, like 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 somebody. Uh, two, three people have asked me this over the last three or four weeks on Twitter about the international investing funds and should people keep some monies aside or is it pointless because um, the, the regime or the, the, the ruling may not change. Now, I think it's difficult to answer that shit is whether it will change or no, but what would you do if, if you were investing into international markets through mutual funds and that's come to a grinding halt about a month or two months ago? Uh, do you kind of keep some money aside, hoping that will change soon, or you're not doing that currently? Shit, is that question is for you? Did I mean, what do you do? Uh, yes, you are. Okay, I think we seem to have just had a slightly snap connection with shit. Is uh, Brin, can I ask you the same question? Uh, would you uh, keep some money aside for yeah, that investment, or what do you do? Yeah, Marin, carry on. Let's yeah. continue okay. first. 
So yeah. Neeraj, yeah, then you go, you go. Okay. Is okay. Yeah. Um. Yes, I I know it's looking very difficult. Um. In terms of seeing the limits really getting increased for various reasons. but i would still keep some money aside because certainly uh, if you look at overseas markets especially us markets have corrected anywhere from 16 to 20 25% right so i think you know it's a it's a good time to look at uh, keeping some money aside and maybe looking at investing in tranches of course you know you still can invest in fofs that are investing in etfs abroad so there are a couple of them that are available but i wouldn't uh, you know i would actually wait for some time before investing that money uh, but certainly i would keep some money aside uh, for this particular purpose you you're hoping that the ruling would change soon i i don't know about that i mean as i said there is still an option to buy an fof that invests into an etf and there are about four or five of them available but i'm hoping that it does but it it's looking a little difficult right because all of these decisions impact uh, exchange rates which are not very great right now in any case right so i don't know we have to wait and watch but yes i would keep some money aside and if if nothing happens in the next maybe couple of months then maybe look at reallocating that capital somewhere else okay so the valuation stem brin uh, but obviously no one knows about the ruling she'll try it out for a couple of months if it doesn't change then she may take a decision then Uh, Ashit is what about you what are you doing when it comes to your international investing because the fund route is closed do you keep some money aside for hoping that the ruling changes sometime so why we diversify anyways we diversify first to de-risk ourselves and second to have a better alpha if somewhere else the alpha is getting depleted if you take out reliance from the index we are already 20% correction level it's reliance who's holding the markets and if i'm not clear about whether it will happen now or a year later or six months down the line the discount is already there in the indian market in itself i would like to do a four month rescp for clients across funds in domestic funds only and as and when the limit will increase you can then rebalance the portfolio because uh, uh, the discount which nirmal is talking about yeah us market is also corrected i'm saying in india also there is huge discount tomorrow if dollar will strengthen the situation will not be that good so I'm, my point is my point is here is that the obvious reason allocation is that when there is a discount in indian market and it's a fairly healthy discount which is there in indian market i go for five months you should not wait for that regulation time or approval to come in if you have done a skp otherwise your money is lying in liquid fund if that is the regulation will come you can still stop those skps and you know park your money here also but at the same time keep taking opportunity of these levels where there is a discount in the market got fair points uh, both of you thank you so much a couple of very important topics uh, discussed today and i hope viewers benefited from that timrin shitis thank you so much uh, for joining us on the show thank you and shitis you, you have a great evening mrin you have a good day since you are in <laughs> a completely different <laughs> geography today but thank you both of you thank you i hope we can get a call from us to uh, unlock the limit <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if that were to happen. But yeah, and viewers, thank you so much for tuning into this live of the Mutual Fund Show.